You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center Worldwide Webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. This week, we join Pastor Gary Ziegler as he teaches on the subject, Let the Church Be the Church. This is part three. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. In my hand. That which I'm holding in my heart, the holy written word of God, the Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the word of God says I am. I can do what the word of God says I can do. I have what the word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. I act upon the word, I walk by faith, not by sight, in Jesus name, amen, hallelujah and amen. Turn your Bibles please to the book of Ephesians because I'm teaching on the subject, let the church be the church. So turn to Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. And as you are turning to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to be acknowledging a prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed for all of the believers in Christ Jesus. His prayer was recorded in the book of Ephesians so that we as Christians could all agree and be in line with his prayer. And we'll look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. As Christians, we can also pray this prayer, and we should pray this prayer ourselves, because it is appropriate, it is timeless, and it is a prayer that is scripturally sound. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Circle or underline the word church. In verse 22, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the what? Church. To the church. That means the church has been given the ability to be above and over all things. And we receive that ability or that authority because Jesus has risen from the dead and ascended up on high. In verse 23 of Ephesians chapter 1, which is, the, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now notice in verse 22 and verse 23, I'll read them together. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. His body is the church, and the church is 
his body. Therefore, when we use the word church, we're talking about a people who are identified as the called out ones. We are people whom the Lord has redeemed from sin. And he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He has redeemed us and made us priests and kings and children of the Most High God. Therefore, we are considered his body. And his body is supposed to do all that the head does. The head of the church is Jesus Christ. His body is comprised up of many members. And so the title, let the church be the church, is a title that says, allow yourself as a member in the body of Christ to rise up and act like the head of the church. So we take our instructions from the who? From the head, amen? My physical body takes instructions from my head and I communicate, my head communicates information to the various parts of my body so that the various parts of my body can cooperate to accomplish what the whole body must do. For example, I have to have water, H2O, in order to live. <clears throat> So my head, my brain, sends a communication to my body parts. For example, my arm, my wrist, my hand, my fingers, and says, get the glass of water. And then it says, now go ahead and drink. <laughs> ah. <laughs> now, my lips had to cooperate with getting a drink. My throat had to cooperate with the getting of a drink. And therefore my stomach and now my digestive system has to cooperate with the drink of water that I just received. Do you see how that even though the head has the preeminent part which causes the body to function the head has to have the cooperation of the various members in order for an act to be accomplished. You're a member in the body of Christ. You have to be willing to follow the instruction which comes from the head in order for Jesus to have a full impact in the earth. I'll say that again. You have to cooperate with the head in order for the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, to have full impact in the earth. Now turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians is to you right there. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. In the book of Colossians, we'll see here how that the body of Christ is prayed for again by the Apostle Paul. And the Holy Spirit lets us know that the believers are supposed to identify with and walk according to the head of the church. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this cause... We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and what? Spiritual. And spiritual understanding. Why should we be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding? Because the body will only do what it has been informed to do from the head of the church. So if there is a breach of information from the head to the various members of my body, then that member will act like it's paralyzed. 
and it won't accomplish what's needful for the rest of the body. So Paul prayed that all of us who are Christians, all of us who are members in the body of Christ, he prayed that we would all be on one accord. That we would all receive our instruction from who? From who? From the head of the church. And the head of the church is who? Jesus Christ. So there shouldn't be anybody in the body of Christ who names the name of Jesus. There shouldn't be anybody having an independent way of lifestyle as a Christian. All of us, if we're in the body, all of us should be living according to the head's instruction. So there is no such thing as a Christian who says, well, I interpret it this way, or I interpret the Bible that way. There's only one Bible. And we're supposed to follow the instruction that comes from the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit operating in the earth realm today and instructing us who are members in the body. So if we all have the same Father, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if we all have the same Jesus, who is the one who's raised from the dead, Acts 10.38 described him as how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those that were what? Oppressed of the devil, for God was working with him. Then if we all have the same Jesus, we ought to all do the same thing that he did. And the Holy Spirit who anointed Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that dwells in us through the new birth. And therefore, we're considered new creation people in Christ Jesus. We've got the same Bible, same Lord, same Father. We all ought to be saying the same thing. And we ought to be living the same lifestyle. And we all ought to be able to say the same thing in judgment. Now, in Colossians, you're still there in chapter 1? Isn't this a great understanding that Paul said, I pray that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The word fill implies what? It implies being increased to the place where there's no more room or there's a potential for overflow. So if we're filled with the knowledge of his will, that means all of us will be able to say, I agree, I agree. Why? Because we're all filled. We're not just walking around with the drop. And that may be the issue with why some Christians don't get along with other Christians. It's because some are operating with the drop of information as opposed to what? Being filled with information. Because we're all supposed to be saying the same thing. Now notice he says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God that means we can continue to increase as we grow in the Lord then he says in verse 11 strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the father which hath made us able to be partakers and that word meet is the word able it's the old english word for able he's made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and we talked about this last week. Everybody who's a Christian is called a what? Saint. You're called a saint. And he said here that we might be partakers of the inheritance. All of us have an inheritance. 
All of us do in Christ Jesus. We all have an inheritance. The question is, do you know it? And are you present at the reading of the will? And are you willing to enjoy your inheritance? Because we've all been given an inheritance in Christ Jesus. But he says here, in verse 12 of Colossians chapter 1, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And that word in light means when we all walk according to what God has provided for us in Christ Jesus, we're all going to be shining brightly. We'll all live a lifestyle <clears throat> that is not dark, but we're going to live a lifestyle that reflects the light or the glory of God. People in the world will see you and know that you are a child of God. Amen. They'll say, you're just emanating. You're, you're, you're. When you walked in the room, something changed. Amen. Darkness dispelled and light was now present or became. Notice, he says in verse 13, who hath, is the, hath is the old English word for has, which implies or tells us that the act has already transpired. So it says, who hath or has delivered us. And where the word us is used, you can put your name right there in the Bible. So where the word us is used, say us means me. Us means me. So I have us, and I have a, the word us in my Bible, of course, but I have it printed above it, Gary, in my Bible. Because it tells me who has delivered Gary, which is my name, from the power of what? Darkness, and hath translated us, or Gary into the what? Kingdom of his dear son. So I have been delivered from darkness and I've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And translated means my citizenship now is from heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven even though I'm still on planet Earth. So I can technically pray, Father, thy will be done on Earth as it is in heaven. I can say that from a genuine heart. Why? Because I'm a citizen of heaven, but yet I'm on Earth, and what's going on in heaven is really the way I want things to function here on Earth earth and God says if you pray that prayer then I can manifest my will which is done in heaven I can manifest it on the earth and we have a right to make that request why because we're citizens of where of heaven but yet you also are a citizen of the place or the country where you were born and somebody says, well, I had to go to the embassy to request my citizen. no, citizenship. Well, actually, the way it works, if you choose to become a citizen of a country after you have um, you know, chosen to live in a different place, you can do that, and they'll require you to go through a process in order to be what? To become a citizen. But for the average person... Your being born in that country qualifies you as a what? A citizen. And that's why the Bible refers to us as born again people. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God. That means God's operating and functioning, but you won't be able to see and understand how he's doing what he's doing. Why? Because you're not a citizen. And you're not entitled to the rights and the benefits of all the citizens that are born in the kingdom. So Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. 
Now, Nicodemus had a recognition, though, that Jesus was doing things that most people didn't do. And he said, nobody can do what you're doing. You're a teacher come from God, Jesus. Nobody can do what you're doing unless God is with them. And Nicodemus had pegged it right. God was working with Jesus. And Jesus wanted Nicodemus to increase whereby he could also understand and explain to others how God operates. Turn in your Bibles, please, to John's Gospel, the third chapter. John's Gospel, chapter 3. I'm quoting it, but I want you to read that there's documentation here because the Lord wants the church to be the church. Act like what you are. A citizen of heaven, but yet you're in the where? The earth realm. You may call yourself an American, a citizen of the United States of America, or you may call yourself a Japanese citizen, or you may call yourself a Korean citizen, or you may call yourself an Israeli citizen, or a Russian citizen. It doesn't matter where your natural continent or place where you've come from in the flesh. That's not what the Lord is referring to when he says you must be born again. He's talking about your spiritual birth. Your spiritual birth qualifies you as a Christ, as a Christian, to be identified as a what? As a new creation person, as a person who is born again, as a person who is now entitled to an inheritance. You're entitled to all of the benefits that Jesus provided for you. And if you're ignorant of your benefits, if you're ignorant of the fact that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus, you can live your life like a person who's just a citizen of a natural country and totally miss the benefits that come from the citizenship from heaven. And we're to live a heavenly life on planet Earth. You say, wait a minute, am I going to heaven? Yeah, eventually you get there, but... Like the little boy was told by the minister, the little, the, you know, the, the minister was preaching. And I mean, he was getting at it. Oh, you know, everybody, you want to go to heaven? And they're like, yeah, we want to go to heaven. He said, everybody wants to go to heaven. Raise your hand. And everybody raised their hand except the little boy, Johnny, on the front row. And he said, well, everybody wants to go to heaven. <laughs> raise your hand. And everybody raised their hand, but little Johnny and then the preacher finally he's just you know after he's got he's all excited and thrilled up and he said Johnny didn't you hear me say that everybody that wants to go to heaven raise your hand he says yes sir I did hear you he says but I, he said, then the minister said well, why didn't you raise your hand he said I thought you was trying to get up a load to go right now I ain't ready to go <laughs> I'm not ready to go just yet. I haven't lived long enough yet. I haven't experienced enough life yet. I still want to enjoy life. I'm not against going to heaven. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. I want to live some heavenly life though when? Now. Right now. You know, people say, man, everything's just going to hell. Well, some people are living a lifestyle like hell is a part of their life. And little Johnny said, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I want to raise my hand. I am going to heaven, but I just, I thought you were getting the load to go right now, and I'm just not ready to go yet. I want to have heaven's life operating in my life now. John's Gospel, chapter 3. You there? John, chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, underline the word teacher, because a teacher is going to be focused on a person doing what? Being informed as to how things work. A preacher will inspire people to make a decision to receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. But a teacher shows you how to enjoy the Savior that you have received. It's a big difference. You could not really be benefited by a what? By a teacher unless you've first of all been preached to and made a quality decision to come to the Lord. 
But once you are a Christian, you don't need to be preached at. You need to be taught. Somebody said, oh, are you discounting the importance of a preacher? No, a preacher is a proclaimer of the good news. A preacher is supposed to tell people, look, you've got to get your heart right with God by giving your heart to Jesus because God has forgiven you and reconciled you unto himself. Now simply receive his reconciliation, which means the joining together of that which was broken apart. Receive his reconciliation, power, and grace in the name of Jesus. But once a person does that, what do you do now? Some people are getting preached at all the time. They're constantly being preached at. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with saying that you're a person does need Jesus if they don't have Jesus. But once you have Jesus, you need to learn how to live like a citizen in the heavenly country now that you are a member of. You've got to learn how to live as a heir of God, not just a natural citizen of the country that you live in. And so Nicodemus identified Jesus as a teacher because he knew that he was a teacher. Now verse 2 again. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi... We know that thou art a teacher. So when you see rabbi, what kind of teacher are you thinking about? A Jewish teacher. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, which means truly, truthfully, or faithfully, faithfully, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, underline the words, born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, when he says you've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit, everybody who has a parent, you have a mother, raise your hand. Now, I didn't say they have to be alive, but you did come from a mother, didn't you? And you did have a, and you do have a father as well, right? You can put your hands down, thank you. Now, if anybody says, well, I didn't come from a mother and a father, well, then we need to talk, make an appointment, we'll talk afterwards. Because biologically speaking, in order for you to be here sitting in those seats, you had to have the come, coming together of sperm and egg. Somebody says, well, I came from a laboratory test program. Well, they still had to develop you through the process of a sperm and egg. Therefore, when he refers to the natural birthing process of a child coming into the earth realm, a child is surrounded by what type of fluid? Amniotic fluid, also known as the water bag. So everybody who is born of the coming together of a sperm and egg and has a womb that they could be traced to, whether you know it or not, there's a womb you should be traced to, uh, that water bag there qualifies you to be born again if you choose to be born again. Because you're born once, and to be born a second time is to be called born again. Now, the first one is identifying the birth of your natural body you came from. The second birth is referring to your spirit being born by coming in contact with the Father through Jesus Christ. And you'll, your spirit will be birthed into the kingdom of God. 
And Jesus is explaining this to Nicodemus. Why? Because he's a rabbi, he's a teacher, and he's explaining to Nicodemus why he's able to do what he's doing and how Nicodemus is able to really identify the works of God that are being accomplished. And so Jesus said in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, right, and of the, what, spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, when we talk about being born of the water, you do know that angels are not birthed as humans are. Angels are not birthed as humans. Angels were just created by God. Hence, does an angel qualify to be born again? No, it doesn't. Is the devil an angel? Yes. yes. He's an he's a angel that turned renegade against God, and he decided to go contrary to God's will. Therefore, there is no born-again process for the devil. He can't be born again. And neither can any angels be born again. We are the only ones that can be born again. Humans. Dogs can't be born again. And other things that you may consider as wonderful pets can't be born again. Only humans can. Because we came by water, and then he said, and of the spirit. Notice Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is what? Is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, which is referring to the Spirit of God, is what? Is spirit. So that which is born of the Spirit of God is the Spirit of man. And that word spirit, the second spirit, is a small case S. It's referring to your spirit. See, you are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your intellect, and you live inside of a physical body. And because you are a spirit, and humans are spirits occupying physical bodies, a human can give their heart or their spirit to God, and they can become a citizen in the, in the, in the, in, as a child of God. They can become a citizen in the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus is still, he's like tripping over this. He's like wondering. He, he's like little Johnny. I thought he was trying to get up a load to go up into heaven now. He is really tripping. So let's read this because when we read this, we'll see that Nicodemus is not understanding that spiritual things are real. He's only seeing physical things and the results of the spirit realm, but he doesn't understand the spirit realm. And God wants us to have spiritual what? Understanding. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Underline the words again. You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born, circle on the line the word, born of the Spirit. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. What do you mean? Well, we know we can see the effects of wind, but we can't see wind coming unless we use some type of aids to identify where wind is coming from. But normally, you don't see wind or air flowing in this building. We know it's here, though, thank you, Jesus, that oxygen is in this building. Because our being able to talk and breathe is proof that it's here. But we don't see it moving around. Would anybody say the air is not here? I'm glad. I'm just going to look around, make sure nobody says that air is not here. Air is present here. So therefore, we benefit from things we don't see all the time. You benefit from stuff you don't see all the time. You don't see air, but yet it's here. 
And if it wasn't here, I think we would see some effects. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fall. Okay, anyway, got it? Now, looking at verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master or a leader of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of what? Heavenly. Of what? Heavenly. Of what? Heavenly. 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 Heavenly things. Underline those two words, heavenly things. Heavenly things. There are things that are from heaven. There are things that exist in heaven. It's in the realm of the unseen, but yet it's still there. They're qualified as things. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, while we look not at the things which are seen, things that are seen, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. There's a lot going on in the spiritual realm that what? That people may not see, but they can see the effects of it. Like when? When a person goes out and rapes a kid, you think that's from God? That's from who? That's from the devil. When a person gets drunk, do they go out and build a perfect skyscraper because they are now filled with spirits? It ain't the spirit of God they're filled with. They're filled with some other spirits. And they don't usually go out and build and construct positive things. They usually go out and do what? Destructive things. And usually they are so destructive, they don't even know the destruction that they caused and did while they were under the influence of the spirits. They usually go out and do something ridiculous. Why? Because when they lower their defenses, they became greater instruments for the spirits that are not of God to influence them. I'll say that again. Some of you didn't even hear what I said. I said when they are under the influence of the alcohol or influences, then they are now potential and capable of being used by the spirits that are not of God, which is the devil and his demonic cohorts. So they usually go out and do something ridiculous. And then when the police arrest them and they get sober, they're like, I didn't do that, did I? Yeah, you did it, but you did it by the assistance of an influence that, you know what, the devil's gone now, and here you are standing holding the bag. Otherwise, why didn't they, after they drink, why didn't they just go out and do something really benevolent and good? Mm -mm. It's usually something destructive. Why? Because there are evil spirits. There are spirits from God, and the spirit of God is good. But there are spirits from the devil which are bad. And everybody who says, well, I just don't see spiritual things. So since I don't see spiritual things, everything is just responsible. God is responsible for everything that happens. God's not responsible for everything that happens. There are things from the spirit of God and there are things from the spirit of the devil. And you should know the difference because if you are a Christian, you have spiritual what? Understanding if you're willing to study the scriptures, which explains spiritual things. Reading on further, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus 
Now looking at verse 9 again, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, underline the word believe, because in order to receive information from the Spirit of God and what's going on with the heavenly things, you have to be willing to believe. Faith is your contact with God. If you don't believe that the Bible is God's word, you're not going to understand what goes on from God. If you're going to be strong in faith, that means you have strong confidence that the Bible is God's word. You cannot have strong confidence and know about the things that are going on from the spirit of God unless you are in his word. So Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus. Uh, verse 11, verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I have told you, if I told you heavenly things? And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth, circle the word believeth, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, what? Believeth where? In him should not, what? Perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved what? Darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil, everyone that doeth or practices and loves and engages and wants to do evil. For everyone that, that doeth evil does what? They hateth the light. They don't just dislike it. They hate the light. Have you ever talked to somebody about Jesus and they just hate you for it? Hate you for it. This is what he's talking about. In fact, in other places of the scripture, Jesus says, if they hate you, know this, that they hated me first. Did you know some people got mad with me last week because I said I'm now going to be informed of people's tithing. I didn't say I was going to choke you and make you tithe. I can't do that. I just said, I don't want people around me who are robbing God and you think that that's okay. Why? Because as a pastor, I have a responsibility to want you protected as the sheep of the Lord. And if you are not tithing, you open the opportunity for the devil to jack you up. Now, what kind of pastor wants to see the people of God jacked? Some pastors do. I would consider them a hireling. As long as my money is straight, I'm good. But what about everybody else? Shouldn't the people be blessed? Shouldn't the people be protected? Yeah. Somebody says, well, you know what? I think you ought not know. Well, why shouldn't I know? Why shouldn't I know? Some people got mad at me. We got phone calls. and Oh, I ain't going to that church anymore. Because after all, pastor's going to get in our business. I'm not trying to get in your business. 
I just want to know if I'm, when I'm talking to you, if I'm talking to a liar or not, a thief, an aching. I need to know, are you a Judas? Because if you're a Judas, I'm not your priest. And some people say, well, you know what? You just spend take, take way too much time to my money. Look, I'm tithing. I'm doing the will of God. I want you to be blessed. I want you blessed. How can you get mad at me for wanting you to be blessed? If you don't give God a t- somebody says a tithe, the tithe is too much. God's only, God only told you to give him 10%. And you're mad about that. The only person that gets mad about that is Cain. And when Cain wouldn't give God what God asked for, he didn't go, he couldn't box with God because you can't take God out of heaven. But what he did is he killed his brother that was doing right. I just need to know, do I have to really watch you? I need to know. Because after all, I mean, you're going to hate me. If I'm doing the will of God, I'm like Abel. And there are some people that are really, they're plotting and planning. They're trying to do all they can to stop the power of God. But they just didn't think the covers would be snatched off. And the covers are being snatched off now. I didn't say I was going to put your name on the list and let everybody see who you are yet. <laughs> All I'm doing is, no, and I wouldn't do that. Uh, that's private information. But, but what I want you to do is, is, is be mindful. If you don't obey God at some point in time, you put God in a position where God has to back off. And when he backs off, it's you. And you'll say something stupid stuff or you'll do stupid stuff do you know the guy that was stealing from the lord's ministry from the bag the man judas iscariot that was stealing from the bag of the lord when a woman came to jesus and he and and poured spike our precious ointment on him and she was anointing him he's the one that said well why are you pouring that expensive perfume on jesus it could have been sold for so much money and been given to the poor and the Holy Ghost says he didn't say that because he had love for the poor but he said it because he was a thief and he was stealing from the bag and so if you want to know what's going to be taking place in the future I'm telling you thieves are going to be found out and there are people that they, they're not going to rob banks they're trying to rob churches now I just heard somebody asked me yesterday, did you hear what happened to Pastor Joel Osteen that somebody had stolen a whole weekend's offering? Yes, somebody, I was just informed about that. Did you know that new equipment we just bought? We put it inside of a trailer out here and said we have a really secure trailer. Did you know somebody stole a good portion of our equipment? There are people that are coming after God. And God's people. You better pay attention. Achan ain't happy unless he's trying to reach in your pocket. Cain is not happy with you obeying God. Cain is trying to kill Abel. Pay attention. He said, what am I doing to Cain? Cain, what he does with God, that's his business. No, no. Cain is not looking at God. He can't get to God. He's looking at the ones who are obeying God. And you better pay attention. And there are people that don't even know the Lord who recognize good and evil. Are y'all listening to this? As a pastor, I have a responsibility to tell you when I see the sword coming. I'm going to read this last, this last verse of scripture. Turn over to Jeremiah. No, Ezekiel. Turn over to Ezekiel. And I'll explain my passion. Ezekiel chapter 33. I'll explain my passion. I'm explaining why the Lord is leading me to encourage you in these areas. Because uh, while you're turning to Ezekiel 33, I remember Dr. Price, my pastor, who is now an apostle, um, still alive, doing well, great. I remember when he was my pastor, 
at the church where I was growing up and being taught in the word, he made the statement to all of the employees and helps ministry people. He said, if you do not have legal insurance on your car, don't drive up on this campus. The campus is a church. 32 acre campus. He said, don't you drive up on this campus. Park your car on the street and walk to this church. Say, I'm not telling you you can't come to church. He didn't tell them they couldn't come to church. He just said, don't bring that illegal situation on these grounds. Now, why would a man say that? I thought, man, that is a really, really strong statement. Why would a person warn people not to drive up on campus? And how many people are going to write letters or give phone calls or say, I'm not coming to that church anymore? But see, he was looking from a pastor's position of loftiness. He was looking from a shepherd from a position of seeing over different hilltops. And the sheep don't see what he's seeing. He's being given information by the Holy Ghost of the thief that's trying to come and steal from the sheep. Lo and behold, he said, all of you who work in this ministry, you better show me your insurance card, your valid insurance. And I remember, I had to show mine. All of you that are in helps ministry, show your valid insurance if you're going to work here in this ministry and volunteer in this ministry. And he went through a process of making everybody accountable. You're not going to slide around in here calling yourself, you know, I'll just blend in. There's no blending in now. Okay, let me tell you what happened. As a result of his diligence to love the sheep. This was years ago back in the day where people that came from other countries were taking advantage of the insurance holds. You know when you talk about things falling through the crack? Four or five people, six people, ten people in the car causing an accident. And the insurance companies were having to pay all of them from bogus accidents. My wife and I, were, we were at a red light. And a car hit another car, spun around, hit us while we were at the light. And the people that were in the car started piling out and tried to sue us. Good thing I had what? Insurance. Insurance. We had about three accidents, and none of them were my fault. None of them were my fault. But they were looking to make money and to get rooted and grounded in a, in a country that they believe could afford them opportunities, and, that they, and they didn't mind taking shortcuts to those opportunities. And by my pastor being the kind of pastor that he is, I was walking in protection. They couldn't take my house, even though they were claiming they got hurt. While I'm standing still. They couldn't take my house. I don't want you to be taken advantage of. You're there in Ezekiel? All right, listen to this. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. I'll start reading it. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, 
O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, speak unto the church, the body of Christ. Speak, thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of the transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in, that day, in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Is, is that pretty clear? Yes. Everybody say, Pastor Ziegler didn't write that. <laughs> but I sure put lips on it, didn't I? <laughs> and I have to quit because I run out of time. Let the church be the church. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness, and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Will you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spirit Food Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www.myspiritfood.com. Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.